Welcome back guys, it's another week and I decided I'm going to tackle the topic this week that a lot of you guys ask about, nutrition. And I thought what I'd do is I'd break it down into a couple of different videos because I think there's a whole lot that can be said about the nutrition side of things. And this week I focused on an interval set that I was doing and what I want to do is basically run you through my before, during and after uh, nutrition protocol to show you guys just how much I eat and how much you should be eating when you go out on the bike to do an interval set to ensure that you perform at your best. I think there's a common misconception within the cycling world that you have to be super skinny to perform. And although there is this power to weight ratio argument, there's also an argument for an athlete being malnutritioned and not being able to perform because they don't actually have the nutrients in their body or the fuel in their body to perform at the level that they could be able to perform at. And so I think, you know, while there is all this emphasis on being skinny, being lean, uh, it doesn't have to be that way. And I think I'm a, I'm a good case example because I weigh 82 kilos on a good day. And I think I've shown that, you know, you don't have to be super light to climb up a hill all day. And so hopefully you guys can see that. Hopefully you guys sort of realize that, you know, I'm a human, I eat, I have cravings just like you guys do. And it's just a matter of, you know, putting some protocols in place to ensure that you're not eating crap, but that you're actually eating the food that your body wants so that you can perform when you have to perform. So let's break things down. First things first, free ride. My typical morning regime, I start with a big glass of water with a scoop of greens powder in there. Why greens powder? Because as an athlete, I eat so much carbohydrate and protein that I often struggle to get the greens in. So easy way to do that, scoop of the greens powder, down the hatch in the morning, first serve of greens, done. Little scoop of greens there. It's a blend of 10 greens, high in fiber with spirulina, chlorella, and wheatgrass. On the up. From here, I'll have my brekkie, or I'll prepare my brekkie. So this ride that I did was basically a three hour ride. I had three 20 minute threshold efforts to do. And my fueling is, you know, it's, it's relative to the effort that I'm doing on the bike. So today, super carbohydrate rich because my body is basically burning pure carbohydrate. So big bowl of porridge. In my porridge, I have a whole cup of oats, which is 60 grams of carbohydrate. I have, I just basically pour boiling water on top of that. And you know, with those quick oats, it just thickens up nicely. I don't need to microwave it. I don't need to wash pans. I just want to be you know, simple and effective in the morning. So the big bowl of oats with my uh, two scoops of protein. Uh, and then I'll have some blueberries just to get some fruit in. I'll have some hemp seeds on top of that. I'll have some MCT oil on top of that. Hot tip on the MCT oil is you're not meant to combine it with boiling water. So when I add the water to the oats, it's gonna cool it down, especially with the berries. And then when I pop the MCT oil on top, it'll still remain, I don't know, in the, it basically doesn't change the breakup of the MCT oil. So basically the MCT oil is a medium chain triglyceride that keeps you feeling fuller for longer. And then I'll smother it in honey because like you guys, I have a sweet tooth and I enjoy eating the sweets. So I'll basically have that about an hour before I leave the house. Now, while I'm doing that, I might you know, have a coffee, I'll relax, I'll let the food digest because the research shows that you can't consume that sort of food and then roll straight out the door and expect your body to be able to burn it. These are more complex carbohydrates, which means it's more complex for your body to actually break them down. So, you know, wake up in the morning and if, if it's possible, eat, you know, with some time before you have to roll out the door. I know that's not possible for all of you, but, you know, this is what I do on a day-to-day -day basis and, you know, apply this to you guys as you see fit. So once I've had those oats and I've had that uh, coffee, I have more carbs. I have two slices of toast with a big slathering of butter, and an even bigger slathering of Vegemite. What is Vegemite? Look it up. Do yourself a favor. Go to the local shop and buy some. It's what all the professional athletes in Australia use. It is, yeah, it's a bit of a secret, so I'm not going to tell you what it is. You guys have to go and look that up. 
but it is free horsepower, right? So I'll have my two bits of toast and from here, I basically get ready. I'll kit up, I'll do my free activation exercises. And it's worth noting that I do all of my on-bike preparation of food the night before. Now, some people may do that in the morning. I just find in the mornings, I'm tired. I don't want to stress. I want to have everything basically ready to go so that the morning is as simple as possible. So basically, I will take with me my two one liter biddens, 100 grams of carbohydrate per bidden. There's 200 grams of carbohydrate there. These are liter bottles, and I have six scoops of my Goo Energy Powder in each bottle. I'll then take with me four Goo Gels, 25 grams of carbohydrate per gel. Four of those equals another 100 grams of carbohydrate. And then I'll take with me my Goo Energy Chews, Around 50 grams of carbohydrate per pack, there is another 100 grams of carbohydrate. So there's 300 grams of carbohydrate for a three hour ride, which equates to roughly 100 grams of carbohydrate every hour. Now, when I'm on the bike, I will eat every half an hour. And it's like clockwork. It's like my body knows now when I need to eat. And, you know, and sometimes I'm not hungry. I don't feel like eating, but I've sort of built that rhythm where, you know, I eat every half an hour and that just ensures that I'm well fueled throughout my ride. First gel, 32 minutes in. Energy. Mm -hmm. Hour in, guys. Time for my second little food. Energy juice from Goo. Another 44 grams of carb. Woo! We are at the base of the climb. Three 20 minute efforts to do today. 92% of FTP, so these are hard efforts. I'm gonna have a caffeine gel now, and then I'm gonna pump up this climb and get started. And it's about, you know, fueling the effort. Forget this crap about being skinny. Forget this crap about being, having to be super, super lean to be any good on the bike. It's rubbish. I'm 82 kilos. I did more climbing last year than anyone on earth. 52 Everests. I fing eat. And I eat a lot because, you know, I burn a lot of fuel. Number four, two hours in. Two 20 minute efforts in, need some fuel. It's the third effort done. And that hurt a lot. Three by 20s, actually a little bit higher wattage than what was prescribed. Sorry coach, I'm gonna roll down now. I'm gonna have another gel at the bottom. An hour home on the flat for a proper refeed. Three twenties in the bag. This is another caffeine gel because I am pretty toast. So essentially, three hours on the bike, six different lots of food, plus two liters of sugar water, six scoops of goo carbohydrate mix in there. And what I found is that if you don't eat this amount of food, you just don't perform like you possibly could. So yeah, today I got through my six, you know, bars, chews, gels, whatever you want to call them, my six lots of ride food. And I got through my two liters of uh, carbohydrate mix, which also has electrolytes built in there. And yeah, you'll see, you know, like that's, that's a lot of food to consume while on the bike. And I think, you know, like I mentioned before, there's this misconception that you have to starve yourself, that you have to be skinny, rubbish, bullshit. You know, it's not true. You have to eat. Your body is like a car fuel tank. If it's not full, if it's running on empty, it's not going to perform. And, you know, you have to apply that to your own bodies. If there's no fuel in the tank, your body is not going to perform. So today, following the ride, I actually went to a cafe for lunch because I didn't have anything at home. I bumped into a mate. He said, look, let's go to the cafe, go have some lunch. So I had some pasta there. I had some chicken there. But first things first, I had a can of Coke. Now, full strength Coke, full of sugar. Your dentist will tell you not to drink it. Your parents will tell you not to drink it. I'm telling you to drink it because it's full of simple sugars. Simple sugars are sugars that your body can basically digest really quickly. And after you've done an interval session like I did today, your body needs those sugars to replenish itself. Your body's like a sponge. And if you're not putting those sugars back in, then think of that sponge. It's dry. It doesn't have any nutrients in it. And you want the sponge to be full of nutrients. You want the sponge to be saturated. You know, you want to have all that nutrients available to go to the muscles, to go to the cells in order to, you know, rebuild and restore and be able to perform the next day. 
And yeah, I had my pasta, I had my chicken, and then came home and I had some more carbs. But I also had some protein. I had a protein shake, just mixed with some water and some greens powder, and I had some rice cakes. I wanted some chocolate, the rice cakes and extra carbs. I just wanted something easy for me to snack on. And yeah, that's basically how I broke up my mornings. So in summary, it's quite easy to break things down. You've got your pre-ride food, you've got your ride food, and you've got your post-ride food. And I hope this video has shown you guys just how much you need to eat, how much you can eat, how much your body wants to eat when you go on an interval ride. It's important, you know, I'm harping on about it, but you know, carbs are king. Uh, it's what your body uses uh, as an energy source. And if you're not getting enough carbs in, you're not performing at the best of your abilities. So there you go. That's my nutrition strategy for an interval day like I had today, three by 20 minute efforts. Good bloody hurt. I'm sore today. Uh, but yeah, I hope you've uh, learned something there. If there's one takeaway, it's that you need to eat more when you're on the black. So there you go. Any questions, any comments, pop them down below. I'll have to get back to you guys with some reasonable responses. So I hope you've learned something there. I hope that's been beneficial. I hope there's some takeaways for you guys and I hope you can apply it to your own writing. Bush. Oh, sorry, I thought you were still filming.